Hi, welcome to the first principles method. What is Elon Musk talking about? So think like a physicist got a suggestion for a video about what Elon Musk calls the first principles method of problem solving. And well, I think this is a pretty good idea. So here goes. Now, one question you might ask is, what does Elon Musk's approach to problem solving have to do with thinking like a physicist? So to answer this, let's look at a few things that he has said about his approach. So he has referred to it as a physics way of looking at the world. Also, in describing his method, he said that framework was developed by physicists to figure out counterintuitive things. And lastly, he described the normal physics training as a good framework for reasoning where you're trained to think about first principles and reason up from there. Okay, so there are two main topics of this video. First, how does Elon Musk describe his problem solving approach? And second, does his description line up with thinking like a physicist? Here in this video, we're going to keep the discussion pretty general, but we will give concrete examples in an accompanying video entitled Thinking from First Principles Examples. Okay, so Elon Musk's description of what he calls the first principles approach is the following. You kind of boil things down to the most fundamental truths and say, okay, what are we sure is true or are sure as possible is true? And then reason up from there. If you'd like to see a video that contains this quote, you can click on the link above. And this link and links to other relevant videos are given in the description below. Okay. So to explain what he means by the first principles method, he contrasts it with what he calls reasoning by analogy. So let's do that contrast too. Okay, so reasoning by analogy is basically the following. You look for a similar problem that has already been solved. And then you take the solution to that problem and tweak it to fit your situation. Now let's look at the first principles method. So here, what you do is the following. You question your assumptions until you get down to the fundamental truths, or at least things you're pretty sure are true. And then starting from those axioms, you build a solution to your problem. Okay, so Elon Musk gave the example of getting the price of battery packs down. Now, reasoning by analogy, people thought that they would always be expensive because they always had been in the past. Instead, Musk asked the following question. What are the materials that go into a battery and what do those materials cost? And it turned out that the answer was something much less than the price of a battery. Okay, so slightly more explicitly for the battery pack example, reasoning by analogy would have meant basically taking the cost of battery packs to be very similar to what they had been in the past. So this would have meant just accepting the high cost. On the other hand, the first principles approach means asking what materials are needed for the battery pack and what is the cost of those things. Now, each of these methods has some pros and some cons. So let's look at those. So first, reasoning by analogy. This has the advantage that it is easier, but on the other hand, it also fundamentally doesn't look for radical new solutions to problems. 
So it gives only incremental improvement. On the other hand, the first principles method can find fundamentally new solutions to problems, so it can create breakthroughs. But on the other hand, it's more difficult. Now, let's ask the question, is this a physics way of thinking? And I'm going to argue that the answer is yes. So, in physics, we do a lot of experiments. But we don't say that one experimental result will be like another experimental result. Instead, we start with fundamental laws and see what they predict for that experiment. And when prediction doesn't agree with observation, we fundamentally have to question our assumptions and look for new solutions to the problem. So let's look at an example of a physics type problem where reasoning by analogy definitely wouldn't work and one has to use first principles. Okay. So here's our example. A near-Earth asteroid has been discovered, and you want to know if it will hit the Earth within the next 10 years. Reasoning by analogy would tell us to do the following. Look at other similar asteroids and ask, did they hit the Earth? Clearly, that's not going to work for this problem. Instead, we use the first principles method. So in that case, we take the current position and velocity of the asteroid, we calculate the gravitational forces on that asteroid from other bodies in the solar system, we simulate the trajectory, and we take into account the uncertainties. So obviously, that's a superior method for this type of problem. So the skill set in Musk's description involves questioning assumptions, getting to fundamental principles, and then building back up to a solution to the problem. So why do physicists have these skills? In order to answer this, let's look at how physics works. So in physics, we do the following. We take a set of physical laws. Now these laws might be very well established, or they might be new speculative laws that we're eager to test. Then we take those laws and get predictions for experimental results following from them. Next, we conduct the relevant experiments. And then we ask, do the results of those experiments agree with the predictions of those physical laws? If the answer is yes, we keep those laws around for future tests. But if the answer is no, we write down new laws that are in agreement with all experimental tests that have been conducted to date. And now, with these laws, the cycle starts over. So let's focus on two specific steps in this cycle. So first, let's look at going from step one of this cycle to step two. Here, we take our physical laws and we use them to get predictions for experiments. In order to do this, we must be able to start from first principles and calculate the consequences of those principles. So starting from your core principles, you must be able to figure out where they lead. This is relevant to the second phase in Musk's description of his method. So once you have your fundamental principles, you build a solution from them. Now, what about the first step in Musk's description, questioning assumptions to get to core principles? Where does this fit into the picture we just saw? Okay, so now let's look at the step in this process where we've gotten the results of our experiments and we ask, do those results agree with the predictions that come from our physical laws? 
If the answer to that question is yes, our job is pretty easy. But if the answer to this question is no, then we have to be able to question our assumptions. And when we question those assumptions, we typically question the high level assumptions first. And now I'll get into what I mean by high level assumptions. Okay, so by questioning high level assumptions first, we mean the following. So you save the questioning of the deepest principles for last. In order to illustrate this, let's look at two examples. In our first example, let's say that particle physicists at the Large Hadron Collider get an experimental result that doesn't agree with the predictions of the standard model of particle physics. And in case you don't know what that is, the standard model is basically our current best model of particles and their interactions. And our second example is going to be Elon Musk's battery pack example. Okay, so let's look at each of those two examples. We'll start with example one, where the experimental result at LHC disagrees with the standard model prediction. Two of the first questions that we would ask in this case are the following. One, is the experimental result correct? And two, is the calculation of the predicted result correct? If we're convinced that both of those are correct, then a next question that we might ask is the following. Do we need to add new particles or forces to the standard model of particle physics? So that's the type of high level assumption that we would want to question first. On the other hand, we would be very hesitant to question fundamental low level assumptions by asking questions like, should we give up on the ideas of particles and forces? Or does the universe even exist? Okay, now let's look at Elon Musk's battery pack example. So as we saw, he asked questions like, what are battery packs made of, and what do those materials cost? It makes sense that he would start with high-level questions like that, instead of questioning low-level fundamental assumptions by asking questions like, do we even need batteries, should we even be making electric cars, and should I become a musician? So the idea is that we should start with the high level assumptions and then slowly work our way down to the low level assumptions. Okay, so once you get down to your first principles or what you decide are your first principles, then you start building back up to a solution. Okay. So what we've seen so far is basically a bird's eye view of what it means to reason from first principles. Let's end this video by making a few points. So first, you may fail to find a solution. In this case, you may have to question what you thought were your first principles and go deeper. Next, because you question your starting assumptions, the problem you solve is not necessarily framed in the same way as the one you initially set out to solve. And part of this method is figuring out the right problem to solve. We'll try to elucidate these points when we give concrete examples in the video Thinking from First Principles. Examples.